This is the Porn Tech Plus channel and this is part 26 of the 924S Turbo build. Uh, last episode I was hoping to get a few jobs done but the clutch hydraulics took a lot longer than I was expecting. Um, so I'm going to carry on with one of the things I promised which I suspect was met with a lot of excitement which is the windscreen washer bottle. The position of the standard one I think is going to be where I'm going to be aiming or potentially aiming for, or drilling, making holes and drawing air through for the intake um, for, the, for the new engine. So this needs to be moved. Uh, so I'm basically going to be fitting that, um, relocating the battery and then that's going to go where the battery sits. I'm not daft enough that I'm relocating the battery just to fit a windscreen washer bottle. That was going to be done anyway and I've got a kit coming to allow me to do that. It's just that that I think is going to be a good space in which to fit this. Um, it comes with a little standard bracket so it should be a nice little easy job. You just bolt that on somewhere and then fit that. Um, I'm not so sure about nice easy jobs. So what I might do uh, is create a welder bracket or something in or maybe make a bracket just to take that um, so that I can actually just weld that into place so it's all nice and secure. Um, but we'll have a look at that in a second. Um, hopefully this isn't going to take too long. I say this a lot and then it does. Um, but there's a few other things that I need to start getting positioned and uh, brackets and things mounted. Uh, a few bits that I need to get parts in for. I've got a load of stuff on the way. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see how we go with this and then what else we've got time for. I think the main thing um, that's going to take the time on this, I hope, or not that I hope this can take time, but I hope the other bit's going to be easy, is just getting the wiring from where it is, taking the feedback, and then just plugging it in where it is. So let's start by having a quick look-see at the battery location and where this is going to be fitted and what needs doing. Okay, here we go with the standard battery location. Um, it's uh, the reason I put the battery back in, um, all over the wires and everything all over the place now, is just to get a reading of the height and it clears quite easily at the top of this um, firewall uh, here. So yeah, it's basically the, the washer bottle needs to just sit below that line. The reason for relocation on this one is that the um, leaves and other bits get in here, the hole gets blocked, fills up with water and it can cause rust and rotting and then the fuse boxes are placed nicely below this so it tends to rot through. So if I root this so that it's in the back of the car, which is quite a common thing for people to do with these, um, uh, for that very reason. Although, in fairness, I mean, this is a 1986 car and this has been fine. What has happened with this one, though, let me just get the battery out of the way, is that the, um, although it's not rotted through, um, what did happen was the bolt that was holding the battery clamp in place had rusted through. So I had, I've yanked it out now, I, I had bonded a tray in, which I'd then modified so that it fitted um, and just had the straps on there, uh, which worked perfectly fine. See me through a few MOTs and took some effort to pull it out, but yeah, not too much. So, off my ramblings. Uh, so, this basically needs to now go in here somewhere, and that is a lot closer, a lot lower down um, than the battery was, so, clearance isn't a problem. I think, so I've got some options, I can either sort of mount it over towards the side here um, or to the front end, obviously I'm going to put it pretty much anywhere I want. Okay, so the metal strip is cut now to fit down inside the little hole here. And what I need to do is just work out where this is going to sit exactly. So if it goes like 
there, so that's good. Just mark off the position here. And then down the bottom, it, so it's tilting that way at the moment. Okay, so the metal's now bent into the shape that I need. Um, I've just, well, as you've seen, I've just basically flat down the um, the sections just to give it a clean surface on, on something to weld to, and I've just hit it. So I've not done the front, obviously, as you've seen, but where it's gonna go on the back, I've just hit that with some Weld 3 primer. Um, and I'm going to go and get some to eat, let this dry. Well, that's in there quite neatly now. Um, happy with that, or happy enough with that. I need to get some uh, additional uh, primer on there, um, just for some protection for now. So I'm just gonna pop it off again, give it a spray, and while that's curing, I'll then go down, dig out the wiring for this, and then just start rooting it back. And yeah. Um, that will be the next phase. Okay, so I've chased back the wiring through on uh, some of this, which is, as I said, been a massive pain. Um, these two are for the solenoid, which I no longer need. I'm not going to take them back through um, to the engine bay just yet, so they're going to be scrapping around in here. Um, I'll just mark those so they're a bit neater. This is from the washer system which was over there before which is now going to live here um, I can't really do anything with it at the moment because the, the battery is in there so what I'm going to do is just make something up so that I can essentially test it um, yeah so obviously I've got the, the battery hooked up um, just temporarily so I can test things. The other thing I wanted to test was where I was pulling up one of the wires. I wanted to make sure that the lights were still working properly and I hadn't made a mess of that. I think we can agree it's not the most exciting job, but there's my little brackets. And here is the washer bottle, which we know the electrics now work for. So that will just sit in there. And the hose will obviously come round back up when the bonnet's reattached and we'll be able to see. Uh, so yeah, not the most fun job or most exciting, but it's just one of those things that takes up time and it will allow the car to be legal and be used on the road. So next, just over here, what I'm going to do is have a look at this. This isn't for legality, but um, on here, this is from the Porsche setup so I'm going to try a look take this out and then just see if I can connect these up so that we'll get the same level of support and warnings and whatnot from the BMW setup that I would have had from the Porsche one. OK, 
Okay, so the BMW cap is now nicely wired up to the Porsche system, assuming that it's just a basic switch and works in the same way. I've now got low level uh, warning on the uh, brake fluid. As somebody that normally takes about two or three weeks to get any single job done, I seem to be on a bit of a roll today. So uh, pressing on uh, another slightly dull task but one that needs doing again for the MOT so I can drive the car on the road is uh, replacing the horns basically one side of it just fell to pieces um, uh, as I was going through taking some stuff off previously so I'm going to go down remove that now uh, it's just one bolt I'll show you where it is under the car um, uh, get that off and then get these fitted in uh, in place of what's already there. So up next is the intake manifold again. Um, one slight issue with this at the moment is I've got um, I need to connect up the uh, brake booster. The pipe that it goes to, and this isn't part of the, the connection problem, but essentially the, the well, let me sh show you. The reason that this isn't actually sitting flat is source of my next job. Uh, so that, although I've pulled it out slightly, is the factory connection. So I think that's where the hose would go around the brake booster um, and that needs to come off be removed to give me the space for that to sit down and obviously it's far too tight up against the side there um, so I need to reposition that. So I'm going to look actually I'm wondering so what I was going to try was have a look underneath but I'm wondering if I moved it to the side to come out that way. Um, the the slight issue with this is the depth that it needs because that's been uh, made deeper. So where the, the depth for that to go through. So I'll have a look inside. I'll try and show you inside to explain what I mean. So you can see down the bottom there how that's stepped. Um, and that's really to give the thickness for the pipe going in. Um, so I'm going to have a look and see, maybe just put that more over to the side. So I'll put the fuel rail on just to make sure there's not going to be anything on the end that's going to snag, which I don't think there is. So let's just put that back out again. Uh, fuel systems are another problem for another day. Um, so yes, I think I'm going to come in about here. So what I'm going to do first of all is just was it with the flat wheel, just to flatten it down a bit to make it easier to, to get started. Right, so there we have the newly fitted thingamajig. Obviously there's a big gaping hole here which isn't going to do very much for um, the vacuum. So what I'm going to do now, I have used this previously but for anyone that hasn't seen all my videos, a uh, bit of high heat JB Weld. I've used this before actually on uh, an engine block um, and then drilled it as well and it, it, that, that's worked really well so it's definitely going to fill that um, what I'm going to do is just run a little bit around the edge where the pipe is um, just on the assumption that I'm not going to need to remove the pipe at any point uh, I hope so yeah do this it's basically get this out from the, uh, from the users before Essentially, it's an epoxy, but the way that it's supplied is it's just as a tube. You cut off how much you want and then just knead it together. 
Um, I was just taking the gloves off because the gloves were getting very dirty. So uh, I will do this by hand. Actually, now I'll get some clean gloves. Um, the end's a bit manky, so I might just cut that off. But it's just basically sliced through it. Uh, and then off you trot. So. Right, so once I've got that back on um, and just checked, clearance is great, it's coming out, the little pipes now are coming out of there. JB Weld should be sorted, certainly by the time I come around to doing anything with that. Uh, so very pleased. Um, I did just, with the non-return valve, I was very careful in taking the existing hose off um, from, the, uh, the, from the original vacuum line just because I'm slightly paranoid about breaking the, the special little non-return valve which goes in there. I want to have to try and source another hose. So, yeah, pleased with that. Um, the, the horn's done, sounds horrible. I might end up buying another one. Um, and my little washer bottle thing, um, that's now in and sorted. I should have a battery relocation kit coming fairly soon. Um, but yeah, it was a bit of a pain getting the wiring all background I'm not doing anything with that just at the moment um, but I am going to obviously have to go and, and re-loom a load of it um, which I'll get done uh, before I start uh, actually using this out and about um, so yeah the the only thing was uh, the, the indecision that I've had about the where that goes and um, yeah so I just just need to decide what I want to do about that um, whether I use the original one or the new one it just I need to decide where exactly I need the space but despite these being little jobs which haven't really moved the the build along well actually in fairness that bit probably has but nothing um, substantial this week but it just it's nice to get those few bits done and I feel like I've accomplished probably more than I usually do in fairness. Um, so yeah, some good progress this week. Uh, thanks for sticking with it since you've made it this far. Uh, hopefully catch you next time when I'll probably be doing welding or cutting or the back to the usual sorts of things. But uh, yeah, hopefully catch you next time.